Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the One Hit Combo Music Podcast. Uh, my name is Koopa, and I'm here with the dudes Elvis and Chris. Yo, yo. And, uh, yeah, you know, we always got a little something, something to chat about. So mm-hmm. uh, why don't you go ahead and kick it off, Elvis? I know you had a, a topic you uh, wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was uh, scrolling through my, uh, through my uh, YouTube subscriptions, and I seen a couple things about... Um, What's it called? Party Next Door. And uh, I'm not sure how to say um, Youngin's name. Kalani. 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 Right. And um, That's an R&B singer, right? R&B, R&B singer. Okay. Yeah. To be 100% honest, I have not heard any of her music. I her heard, music is, is tight. Yeah, I, I, I've heard some of hearing. it, but not a lot. Not she a lot has, to really talk about. Had, I'm not going to lie. I think she's talented. I've, I've heard that a lot. I mean, she I, sounds good, yeah. I, you, I, I haven't heard her music. I honestly... Don't know her aside from this, to be honest. I and to be honest with you, aside from uh Drake shouting out party, you know, a party next door, or, or what does he call him? He calls him party, right? Yeah, he calls him party. Yeah, yeah. aside from that, I is that is that dude on his label? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, 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 to be fair, uh, he does have a a pretty big following. Uh, he his his issue is he doesn't release any music, and he hasn't released any music for a real long time. Like, I if I'm not mistaken, I think he has like one project out. And this was like maybe two years ago. That's and random as shit. Yeah. That's that not like Jay Electronica, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Electronica all over yeah. here, but in R and B style. Yeah, no you know both. I mean? uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I I think that's his whole thing. That's the reason why he hasn't really, you know, kicked off his his career as you know others probably might have because he just doesn't release music. But that's I mean he 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 has a following though. He has, yeah. he has some he has some buzz. Though. I I heard uh, I saw uh, a DJ Academics video where he was giving him a shout out saying that he wants him to release a, a album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and usually I side with academics a lot. You yeah, know, he's, he's, he's pretty good judge. Yeah, y'all got me in academics. I watch him like at least a couple times yeah, a week. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude. yeah nah, he's, 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 he's I think he, he keeps it I think he keeps it the realest out of all the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. YouTube, yeah. 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 Actually, I mean, I, I mean, I do like, I like academics, but I kind of like, uh, I think I showed it to you one time. It's called uh, Dead End Hip Hop. Yeah. yeah I kind of yeah. like them just a little I bit better, really but they're, 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 I mean, yeah. Dead End Hip Hop is kind of like, it's kind of like how we do like one hit combo, like music reviews and stuff. Yeah. They'll do reviews of albums. There's four of the dudes and they have this one chick named Sophie that hosts it and they got questions that people will ask them and they do all, you know, just oh, all okay. kinds of stuff. I'll, I'll send you the link for it later, okay. but yeah, oh, they, definitely. they go in on people and like there's this one dude, uh, you shout outs to Mike C Town because he's actually a beast. He likes like uh more he's like more alternative music really. Right. But um oh, nice. he does listen to rap and um he's really, really like to me I think he's the most critical one out of all of them. But he'll give you his flat out honest, like just emotional yeah. opinion on some shit. And that's what I really respect. But no, the whole channel is tight. You guys should definitely yeah, check it out. And you guys out. listening, if you guys haven't if you guys haven't heard of him, look him up on uh, YouTube. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, but, yeah, which, but um I guess back to yeah, back yeah, to go ahead, my bad. <laughs> so in case, in case uh, you know you guys are listening, which I'm sure you guys already know, uh, you know, probably next door posted up a picture on Instagram holding Kalani's hand, and uh, I believe what the what the caption read was, uh, even after all her sh- shenanigans, I got the R&B singer back to my bed. Damn. Now, okay, but see, this is where this is where me and me always agree on this. This is where I have a problem with that. And this is why, well, well, let me, let me just add on to the whole, and then I'll, I'll okay. give my opinion on it. Okay. So he posted this picture up. And for those that, that don't know, uh, at the time, Kalani was going out with NBA player Kyrie Irving. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny because this seemed like the power couple with the NBA. Like there was, you know, this was the relationship. This is the, the 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 key picture in all the relationship go memes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, is it that they like the new Lala yeah, and, and Carmelo? Man, it went from Lala and Carmelo <laughs> to to Wiz and Amber Rose and that uh, now uh, then Beyonce and and, and fucking Jay, Jay, yeah. And now it's fucking Kalani and and Kyrie Irving. But you know, the point is that they looked like they was having a real good time and, and yeah, it was really you know for each other, right? <laughs> and then um you know so that's when. Social media got a hold of this, uh, and, and, and you know, and you know, yeah. Once social media gets a hold of something, it's all it's right. game over. It's like game if over. you're if you're a part of it, you better turn your phone off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like 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 fuck it, delete your shit, man. Just just wait for the shit to blow over. My favorite post was Kyrie wears two for a reason. 
<laughs> Where's number two for a reason? Oh, <laughs> he plays in number two. He, his jersey's number two. Right. He's you know, the second. You know. Yeah, my nah, God. But look, so. Uh, That's cold. So, so, you know, everybody's wondering what the fuck happened. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's seen. All we have is this picture. Yeah. So, we really don't know. Last thing we know, she was with Kyrie. Then, he's in a picture with this nigga in bed. And you're wondering what the fuck. Oh, the picture it? was in bed though. In bed. I mean, oh. can, can you really tell us in bed? It was in bed. I mean, it's really just the hand. No, oh, you can it, really see it, it was in bed. Hand. It was in bed. Mm. Regardless of the fact, it doesn't matter where it was. Yeah, that's true. True. The ex So right. So everybody's fucking just coming for her, calling her a smut, calling her everything under the world, right? Yeah. And we funny thing is, we really have no idea what the fuck really happened behind the scenes, you know? But you know, social media being social media, uh-huh. we just attack without. Because no if, if if the if the lie is more entertaining than the truth, is going to run. And besides, uh, shout out to Bodega Boys. Uh, what is it? Uh-huh. Facts don't matter. Facts oh, yeah, don't facts, matter. Facts don't <laughs> matter. So, Twitter does not give a fuck about facts. We just go for what we have in front of us. We don't care what the backstory is. Hell yeah. We just come for you, and we came for your ass, Kalani. I'm saying. <laughs> the but, memes are relentless. Yeah, I'm not going to say I'll be on that meme game, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, 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 you know, to be fair, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, you know, memes and jokes were a little brutal, if you, if, like, to be light, you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Um, But, uh, you know, eventually, I think later on in the night, uh, well, I think it was the next day, if I'm not mistaken, she posted up a picture. She, at first, because she had deleted, she deleted her Instagram account. Once that shit, of course. Of course. Yeah, right? So, uh. Only way to get around it. Right. And then, I want to say it was the next night, uh, she reactivated it and posted up a picture of herself in the emergency room. Apparently, she had committed, uh, she had tried to commit suicide. I want to know how. Cause, yeah. Because w- w- one of the posts was, you know, thanks to, uh, yeah, to start for saving for saving her life. Yeah, you like, know all so, that sounds like to me is just like stunting on Instagram for likes and, and, yeah, and sympathy. Yeah, no, no, and, and, like. and it's funny you say that because a uh, fellow R and B artist, Briss oh, Breezy, <laughs> Briss the beige, Breezy. Ba- the big beige bastard, <laughs> <laughs> Briss Breezy, savage R and B singer. Yeah. Uh, Chris nah, Brown, gangsta for, R&B singer. yeah, gangster R and B singer. Chris, Chris Brown, for those who don't know, nigga, uh, cold blooded. Uh, yeah, R&B so I don't know singer. if you've seen that. Uh, I saw that shit. Yeah, so this motherfucker, he, I guess he doesn't know the phrase too soon, because <laughs> <laughs> this nigga went right the fuck in. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And the funny thing is, he said his the funny. Oh, so for those who don't know, he went on to say that this whole, you know, especially the whole uh, suicide post and all this shit. He said he's saying that she, yeah exactly that you know she pretty much did this to die down the hate that she was receiving right wow. now rather or not that's true I don't know but Chris Brown didn't give a fuck about facts either yeah. and he said you know what fuck that bitch he came for my man's and did him dirty so but he, I I kind of I want to say I recall Chris Brown doing somewhat the same thing after the whole Karuchi yeah, thing no 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and that's the reason why you know. Like I said, shout out the academics. That's why we call him Briss Breezy, because I feel like Briss Breezy. He's, see, there's Chris Brown and there's Briss Breezy. <laughs> Chris Brown is the guy making songs that your your local 13, 14 year old, 15 year old. Like. <laughs> Briss Breezy is the type of nigga that goes on Twitter rants and makes songs about fucking bitches and shit. Like that. There's a difference. <laughs> and is an Instagram with a bunch of bloods posting yeah, up guns exactly. and shit. Exactly. Yeah, I need him to sit the fuck down. Yeah, with that. exactly. Yeah, that's Briss Breezy. All right, so. You know, Briss Breezy went on Twitter rant, and uh, he just pretty much said that, you know, she did all this for attention, saying that he has Kyrie Irving's back. Now, here's the thing. I feel like you can say you have Kyrie Irving's back right. without completely making an ass of yourself. Right. You know what I mean? And the funny thing is, I feel like nobody, he is in no real place to talk about any relationship because all of his relationships <laughs> have really been a joke. Bad. Bad. Just it like, ended bad. No Let's one to talk honest. whatsoever. Let's be honest. Every female that's come in contact with Chris Brown, if you really think about it, has left in some type of physically or an emotionally damaged yeah, state. Yeah. <laughs> now look at baby mama. Her baby, yeah. Yeah. Like, let's be real. Rihanna, obviously, we know about Rihanna yep. getting her ass beat exactly. in, a fucking, in a fucking Porsche or wherever the fuck he was driving. Yep. Then we got uh, Kakarot, Karuchi, <laughs> Kamali, Kakarot, no. whatever the fuck you want to. We all have nicknames for her, okay? Yes. So whatever Kawasaki. You, Kawasaki, <laughs> Kawapanga, the list goes on. So whatever you call that bitch, right, uh, that ended bad. And it's funny because 
she made him look like a like I'm telling you, Chris, she did though. He doesn't know when to walk away. Like he's probably had chances to walk away and kind of seem like he kind of came out on top. Yeah. But then he does all this dumbass shit on Instagram that makes him look weak. Let's well, he that. does the dumb shit in public, like when he followed her home, when he tried yeah, to get in yeah, with her yeah. in the club and then followed her home and all yeah, the other shit. Yeah. Like, like that just makes you look like a desperate dude. Like, yeah. Like yeah, seriously, cool. light skinned activities are going on right now. <laughs> no, definitely. Simple, yeah, so simple like, that is fine. Right. Like. like one of the things I don't understand is why is why is Shorty catching all the slack for the picture when when the dude is the one who posted it? You know, parties no, and the and picture. no, you're right. You know, so but you know, girls always catch more than dudes in the in because, the, no, with that why? type of shit. No, because you know, uh, it is. No, 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 no. Here's the reason why I think uh, because I feel like now y'all correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like society views it a lot worse. If a woman cheats on a man, yeah. if a man cheats on a woman, it's, 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 it's way more acceptable. It's almost like, it, I guess you could say expected or like, you know, it's it's not that bad if a it's guy a, does it's it. It's a stupid stigma. Yeah, no, it is. And, and, yeah, and no. I, I totally, it, it, I totally, and, and it's funny because I've, uh, to be honest, I've always agreed with what you're saying yeah. that it, it, I think it shouldn't be. It shouldn't matter, man. It, like, and like, I, it should, no, what, what I was going to say is th- there shouldn't be, you know, like. Two ways to look at. It. I feel like you should look at both male and female the same way. Yeah. If a nigga's being a dog, then he's being a dog. If a bitch is being a, dog, you should look at it the same exactly. way. It shouldn't be like, yeah. Because I know enough. I know enough niggas and enough bitches that be running around uh, doing everything. Both. So I mean, yeah. like you, like to me, you can't disqualify one. Exactly. Yeah. So, so now, nah, but not, nah, but 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 to uh, add to what others were saying, I feel like the one who should take the most heat, and I think he is taking a lot of Party. heat. Is party next door? Cause let's be right. honest. So let's be honest. Shit. Let's look at the fucking uh the uh the caption in its, yeah. in its own. Yeah. He pretty much said, uh, what he said was, after all her shenanigans, she's finally back in bed with me. Mm-hmm. What that means to me, to you, and to everybody who has half a brain is, she went after she went around fucking with other niggas. She's back with me. So, yeah. So she's back like, home. Yeah. So it's <laughs> like, what like. What the fuck? And, 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 and also and, and, putting and, it on, on. Yeah, like even if even if I right, even right? if you really feel that even way. if you really feel that way, you know you you still feeling shorty, right? You don't gotta go out and put no. this shit on, you know. Especially nah. when you know that's that's kind of like stunting, but you're not you, what you're stunting about isn't really exactly. what you're stunting about. Yeah, and, 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 and man, I don't know. I think that shit is wild. And, and to be like, honest, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I don't know if you guys you know keep up with him or anything, but he's set to release. He just released a new single with Drake, which I think is a dope ass song. But he's set to release a, a new project. I'm not sure if it's a mixtape or album. I think it's an album that he's supposed to release. Now, you can even argue that this shit right here... Yep, makes is, sense. You know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 to hey, hype and, shit and up. See, I, now, didn't, I didn't even now, think that, so that's hell of marketing right now, there. Now, I think that might be a reason he might have done it. Makes but sense. But... I think it might backfire on him because I yeah. feel like he, I feel like he is catching a lot of heat because it's because because I, I just most people. I mean, let's be honest, you know, he's a wack expo- ass move. Yeah, it's, no, like you know, talk like most people would agree that talking about shit like that in public, you know, like yeah, to your homies and shit. Yeah, I just yeah, you know, Kalani, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, that's cool. You know, what I'm saying you know, talk about it with your homies, dog, but. Putting it out in public, yeah. that just means that the next girl that you fuck with isn't gonna want to fuck with you exactly because you know to run your mouth. That, that, that goes right into the whole uh, the whole thing with uh, Nick Young and and and, and uh, yeah. The, the oh rookie. yeah, the, I uh, literally just heard about that a yeah. couple hours Son, ago. I yeah. thought he thought that shit was crazy. So I, had, yeah, I, had I couldn't believe phone, it. Had the phone recorded in the back of the seat while you know you could just hear the whole conversation. Oh, I only heard the audio. I didn't see the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. So so pretty much, you know what it looked like? It looked literally like. Like, he, you can't tell me there wasn't no Mount Set there. I don't give a fuck what you tell oh, me. Yeah, because stupid. he was literally, like, he was sitting on the couch, and Nick Young was laying on the bed. And you could see that he was kind of, like, trying to, like, be slick about it. Yeah. And, 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 and the phone is looking at the back of the seat the whole time. You're wow, yeah. somebody the back of somebody's head. Yeah. Well, it looks like they're, like, in, like, the either the, maybe the... I'm pretty sure they were in the hotel room. And he yeah. was, like, randomly questioning the shit out of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, why do you want to know all this, though? Like, no, what the fuck? And, 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 and it, it, it's... Man, that that's but, shit. and, and that's well, well, what, what this like makes me think of, right? It's almost like the roles of reverse, like like, like to, you know, going back to party, party next door, right? I feel like what he did is kind of a female move, you know, to put up, you know, a picture like that, you know, of of your ex, you know, after they already with somebody. That's real female this to me. Same thing with uh with uh um I forget son's name, the the, the, the oh, rookie, the an, uh, uh, D'Angelo. What the hell's his name? I don't know. I couldn't remember. I Fuck. I couldn't uh, even. I didn't. I didn't even know his name when I heard him. D'Angelo 
was it Russ? Uh, oh, we'll man. call him that nigga. Uh, the, the, M- the NBA <laughs> rookie for the Lakers. There yeah, the rookie for the Lakers. D'Angelo yeah, Russell, I believe, is his name. D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, 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 it is Russell. So, so you know what I mean? Like even what he did, that, that, like I wouldn't expect that from a dude. Nah, like, nah, like, nah, that, that's not at all. Female shit. Yeah, me. it's almost like the roles are reversed. But hey, but I mean, I, I you kind of seen this whole thing. Like I mean. I don't want to go in on the way that Nick. Well, I will. I, the way niggas be like a lot of these new niggas be dressing. I mean, they a lot of niggas dress effeminate, yeah, yeah, like man. real effeminate. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is some new other type of shit. Like, if you if 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 dudes were dressing when I was in high school, which was like between ninety nine two thousand and one, like that, and back then niggas would have got their ass whooped. Like, it wouldn't have been like you would have been you would have been like basically chased the fuck out to school niggas would have been talking about you left and right you wouldn't have got no play from no type of girls like like niggas would have been like oh you fucking with that gay nigga over there blah 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 like like it it would have been insane like you would have never you would have never survived high school looking like that i mean but i just feel like now it's more acceptable just because i mean let's be honest times have changed and yeah now, very much if you're out here wearing a a, a four or five x t-shirt yeah, that's you're, true. You're looked at more as a bama than anything. You're yeah, not, true. But really you can wear that extra medium joint and yeah, be looking like yeah, a sausage rolled up, yeah, and, and everybody and be rocking with it. But I think that just has to do with you know really where we're at, uh, you know, as far as I guess a culture really. Yeah. At the end of the day, but um, I don't know, man. It's 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 interesting. Yeah. Really. Just at the end of the day, that uh. Yeah, niggas is really looking like bitches now. <laughs> yeah. like, like for lack of better terms, yeah, I, I really couldn't think of any I mean, other way. You couldn't say this any better. Like, I'm like, saying, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, well, I mean, niggas was looking all alike before, where they was just like, especially around here in DC, dog. Like the formula for most niggas in DC for like ten years was long dreads, like skinny jeans, I, I, I with I like terms. like. I had, I had phone pauses. I hate to break it to you, Cooper, but. Yeah. It, it, that's still going on. Oh, that's still the style. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I just must not be. Yeah, I, I must have I become have blind to it now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like these. Exactly. I, when I remember, I remember driving down the road and I'd be stopped at a stop like down in downtown Silver Spring, and you see people walk across the street, and it'd be three dudes dressed exactly the same, just in a different color scheme. Mm-hmm. You saw the neon boxers, mm-hmm. the big fluffy socks on. The fucking the Air Forces or whatever the fuck they were. The, the, the dreads was flowing. Tight t-shirt. Like, I oh, mean. It's cold. You gotta have the, the heli. Of course, heli Henson. Heli Henson. <laughs> you know, what, what, what's the DC Savage without heli Henson? Oh, right? God. But I just, I don't know. Like, yep. the whole, I don't understand the whole, everybody, I guess the whole gender swapping thing or whatever, you know. Yeah, whatever. I don't know, man. I, I guess this whole, you know, the, whatever, you know. Everybody being uh, what is it PC? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody's like, eh, you know, we're not gonna say too much about it. So, fuck it. But, yeah. whatever. I know yeah. when I have kids, they ain't gonna wear that. So yeah. Um. I mean, I I guess to finish off on on, on the on the whole the whole situation. I mean, do do you guys feel like you know let, let's you know probably next door he said to release an album. I don't know if Kalani said to release anything. I'm Kalani pretty- just released an album like oh, okay. early, a little earlier this year. I have the album. I've listened to like half of it. I mean, it sounds good for what nice. it is, but I mean, I really haven't. I haven't given it much time to digest. You know what right. I'm saying? Now, you know, like like we just mentioned a couple minutes ago, it could this could be all a big publicity stunt, mainly yeah, orchestrated by Party Next Door since his project is dropping yeah. soon. Mm-hmm. Do you do you personally feel like this is gonna really affect him, and if it positively or negatively? I doubt it will. Af- it, actually, it probably will affect him because this will bring about everyone knowing who the fuck he is. Yeah, because I didn't know who he was before today. I, I mean, and he could have dropped an album, and they could have been, you know, pumping it in like the little circles that he's already, you know, big in or whatever, right. and the people that know about him. But I mean, like. If unless he came out with that big, you know, whatever hit or that crossover hit that you know to make that little pop hip hop sound right, that right, you know right. OVO was famous for, right. uh, I probably would not have heard of him for maybe about another year. Sure. I mean, certain cases, uh, what was it called? What was that saying called? Uh, no, no, uh, uh, all, publicity. All, publicity all publicity is good publicity. Is good publicity. Yeah, you know, in certain cases, it's true. I, I believe it's probably one of those cases. Well, I mean, like I said, I, she's had an album out for maybe a month, maybe two months now. He's got an album about to come out. I mean, and maybe it's like it might help both of them out actually, because yeah, I didn't know who Kalani was at all until someone told me to download so, the album. You know, and and I mean, like you said, you know, I, I know a lot of people who pretty much told me the same thing. Both of you guys are saying that I really had no idea who Party Next Door was until this whole shit happened. Exactly. You know, you know so I mean, I, I I personally feel like again, like you said, it, it it's gonna help in good and bad ways. 
I feel like he's still gonna catch a lot of heat, but he's he's definitely gonna catch a lot more attention at least. Oh yeah, definitely. From uh, your 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 average you know listener than to your hardcore fan, I guess. Exactly. And people actually, I mean, like I said, they might go back and listen to Kalani and figure out why the fuck this bitch tried yeah, to kill her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, <laughs> I, I want to know how she tried to. I mean, did he find her hanging and then brought her down? You know. Well, she had the she had her hand in the picture there? at the hospital, but yeah, like you know, I didn't see like bandages or anything on it, so I didn't I look know, like she tried to cut her wrist or make. He said, said that she said that he saved her. You know what I mean? So I'm guessing an overdose. I guess hmm. I don't know. Panda, yeah. Panda, yeah. Panda. <laughs> hey, hey, talk about a vicious uh. Uh, 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 processing into our next, uh, topic. Uh, let's talk <laughs> about, let's talk, yeah, transition is what I was looking for. God transition. Damn. Yeah, awesome transition there. <laughs> um, let's talk about, uh, you know, next, uh, upcoming artist. I would like to think, I think Elvis would like to disagree on that. All the way disagree. Uh, <laughs> my homie from New York, uh, designer. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't know that from listening to his music, though. Now, now, Shit. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest with you. Sound like right? French, though. I'm gonna be honest with you, all right? I fucking like Designer, okay? And now, that's the one song that I've heard from him because I really think he, he does it. The funny thing is, I don't think he has any of his music. So pretty much, I've looked all over the internet and I have not been able to find out one song from this motherfucker, right? Except so, for this one that's out. Panda. Okay. And, and uh, the freestyle that he got, or the, the verse that he got on uh, on Kanye's album. Yeah. Um, so that just makes me think, did Kanye really sign somebody off of one song? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean... Mm-hmm. But um, so far, what I've, what I've heard from from him, I, I really love that song. Like to be honest, with you, I think that song is is fire as hell. Now, here's where the bullshit comes in for most people. This nigga sounds just like uh, Future. Yeah, he does. Now he even does the whole little ad libs, everything. Uh, Every, uh, even uh, even uh, his uh, intro, uh, how he, when uh, he comes in, yeah, the uh, way he comes in, he sounds just uh, like Future. So yeah, that shit is uh, whack. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. Now nah, I feel you. Whack. Now I feel like. And like I remember me and I was talking about the show the, the other day. I feel like you can compare uh, you know, designer to Young Thug when he first came out. A lot of people were saying he sounds just like Lil Wayne. And I'm not gonna lie, I was one of those people. Mm-hmm. I thought he sounded I confused like Yeah, me too. I confused him, uh yeah, me too. too. I, you know, you know what's true. funny? There was a song that came out, I wanna say it's the one with T I if I ain't about the money. I think it might be that one. I don't remember, but I but, uh, but yeah, I know that song. I, but it might be that one, or it might be another song. But there was one song where, for the longest time, I thought it was Lil Wayne that was rapping, but it, it happened to be Young Thug. Now, all that being said, eventually, I think Young Thug found his sound, and, yeah. and there's no mistaking when you hear Young Thug. If you hear Young Thug, you know it's Young Thug. Now, there's no, yeah. oh, is that Wayne? Or you know when it's exactly. Young Thug. I mean, so so my whole thing is, yeah, he sounds just like a uh, future. But, you know, I feel like eventually he's going to evolve into his own sound, to be honest. All right, so, so I mean, this is my whole thing about it, right? I guess, you know, I'm a little bit older, you know, so, you know, I grew up listening to the locks, you know, Wu-Tang Clan, you know, yeah. a lot of New York hip-hop, right? And, you know, I feel like back then, like, you know, you know, I just mentioned the locks and Wu-Tang, right? But I feel like they couldn't come out sounding like the locks couldn't come out sounding like Wu-Tang and vice versa. Yeah, nobody you know could come saying? out nobody sounding like could, nobody because, back in the day. Because it would have been dead. It would have been dead off the break. As soon as you, you know? like, it could be 10 niggas on a song, but you knew exactly who was on exactly. the song because you know exactly. everybody's voice. Everybody's voice was distinct. Not, not only voice, but like, it's more than just voice. You know, it's a certain swagger. Yeah, it's the style. style. Yeah, you know, the cadence in which they actually yeah. rap. So, so you know, that's what I'm looking at, dog. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the dude designer. Like, like, first of all, son, the dude's name is Designer, right? Um, uh, uh, when I heard when I heard the name Designer, I immediately thought of that song with uh, the Future Joint. Uh, drip the North Designer. Oh, really, I'm the plug. Yeah, really, I'm the plug. Really. That's immediately what I thought of. So I'm like, yo, so I'm like, dude, what are you doing, dog? You yeah. just literally just big everything you just from this band right there. I mean, that's exactly how a lot of people felt about, and that's how I felt about Action Bronson when he first came out. Oh, with the whole yeah, sound exactly Ghostface, like Ghostface. Though. I mean, trying to get Ghostface see, slowed see, down see, almost see, exactly. See, look, but, but look, the thing about that, right, is, is that, I mean, even though Ghostface still, you know, he's still out there. I don't think he's out there like how Future is. You know, yeah. Future's everywhere right now. You, you know, he's what's hot. You get what I'm saying? So I get it, what you're it, saying. It's like, it's like you, you know, you kind of just pick the hottest person now and was like, okay, you know, this okay. shit works for them. It's going to work for me too. Okay, now, you, now you let me, I mean? now I'm, I'm going to say this. Now, 
I didn't know this guy, uh, designer, was this young. I, I, I think he's not even 20 years old. I think he's, he's, like, a, he's like 18. He might be 18 or 19 years old, right? So my whole thing is, you know, you can't really expect a young kid coming out of New York to really not be fucking sounding like this. To me personally, because if you think about it, right now what's popping everywhere mm-hmm. is the whole down south. Yeah, thing. exactly. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to hear, you know... Even guys from New York, even guys from New York, like I mean, who are popular, like badass. I said, Fren- French, Montana like yeah, French Montana is the biggest example. Exactly, French Montana. Yeah, French Montana. He he does not have no. I don't think he has French Montana. Montana. I've I never heard him sound like he actually is from New York. In fact, I thought he was from like the South. Nah, to me, to me, he sounds like a, like an old school. Right, he doesn't sound like a southern rapper to me. I just I have to completely disagree with you on that one. Nah, like his flow is just he's got that slower flow yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, but but I, man, I've man. never. I've I mean, I'm not gonna say I've heard in excess of 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 his songs, but like every song that I've heard, like I've never heard him rap fast. I've never heard him like do multi-syllable words in songs and like have that verbal acrobatics that you I mean, hear yeah, from he, niggas, like you hear from like most niggas from New York. He don't, he ain't out there listening I mean, to fat. He, he ain't even music. out there sounding like Fat Joe. Like, I mean, he makes honestly. Music. Yeah, yeah, he does. So, so, okay, so, so I mean, but I mean, but just because you make trap he, music doesn't mean that you can't. But I don't think he has that that southern like to me he doesn't to me I feel like he sounds like he's from New York. Okay, but you, and, and, and to, <coughs> to add to what you were saying, you just mentioned Joey Badass, right? Yeah. Now I think Joey Badass is tight. You know, yeah, so no, I, he's, I he's personally like Joey Badass, right? But now you just said he has that New York sound kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. Old school. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck, right? Um, but to be fair, he has what you I guess uh just a strong fan base and I feel like that's what keeps him really I guess I, I hate this I hate to use the word relevant because I think he's he, he deserves to be relevant because yeah. he's nice yeah. but let's be let's be honest the reason why he's you know he has he has his, his strong following you know what I mean and I feel like that's the reason why he's successful and I mean like I mean but, but, in New York if you sound like a New York rapper and you're good you're going to be successful okay but here's yeah, the thing be hot in New but, York, but, but here's the thing if you ask your your you know your your casual listener about Joey Badass, they're probably not gonna know who he is because he's not your he's not your Drake, he's not yeah. your Future, he's not your Fetty Wap, he's not a superstar. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And I feel like right now in the time that we're in, I feel like you can't be that sound and be a superstar. You see what I'm saying? I feel you. So and I feel like that whole that that all adds up to why somebody from New York like designer might want to sound like, you know, future. And if you think about it, come on, he's he's pretty much a young kid, fresh out of high school yeah. probably. This is what he's been listening to for like a minute. The last now. two, three years, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much from the moment he became, you know, transitioned from a teenager to an adult. Jumped off the porch. Southern, exactly. Southern rap is like dominant. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. It seems like, it almost seems like now you kind of have to abandon you know individuality and in, well individuality yeah. but also your roots and like you know where where you're from, where you're man, from man. to really be popping you know what i'm saying like you know we were talking about you know before you know the podcast about uh you know chicago rappers yeah the whole drill movement now yeah. the drill movement was popping like shit back in 2012 i don't understand why none of them, none of them rappers have, have have blown up yet dude and now yeah it, it, it's it, I, I now, give me it. give me some of the rappers that are there. I know oh, yeah. Chief Keef's in Chief there. Chief Keef, Fredo Santana, you got Is Gooch uh, in there? Gucci? Gucci? He's he's at he's at Atlanta. No, no, oh, he's he's Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. You, uh you got Fredo Santana, you got six hundred Breezy, you got um Lil Reese. Yeah, Lil Reese. Um, I'll be honest, G, as much G Herbo, G Herbo is actually the man right as now. As much as I listen to like as much music as I listen Lil to Lil 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 yeah, only Lil person Dirk, I yeah. only person I've heard of is Chief Keef. See, and, and that's 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 exactly my point. You know, and I don't even know that much so, about so Chief. Look, so look, and and kind of going back to what he was saying, how you gotta abandon, you know, your roots and where you're from. Like the Chicago drill music is really big in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not getting no love anywhere else, right? And I don't understand why. And it's like these drill rappers, they have to change up. Like for example, G Herbal. Um, I forgot what was his name before. I don't remember what his name was before before that. Um, Lil Herb. Oh yeah, Lil Herb. He used to go by Lil Herb. He's, and, and I feel, I, I, I feel like call me on that. I might be wrong. Yeah, no, that was Lil Herb. And, and then, and then I feel like, I feel like when he changed his name, that was kind of like him. Yeah, exiting I, 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 the I drill see, movement. Didn't even think about that, but you're right. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it was kind of him, like saying, because, because you know, I see him on Vlad now, and um, he doesn't want to be known as a drill rapper. 
You know, he, I, I heard him actually say, I'm not a drill rapper. I'm a rapper. You know, and, and he kind of changed up his, his, the way his flow a little bit, too. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and it's working for him. You know, same thing with uh, Lil Durk. Lil Durk, you know, he's... Uh, Maybe he's, it's just the style of music isn't yeah, as popular I mean, as, a, as a mainstream style. To, to be honest... If that many rappers are coming out of the area, I mean, but they're not when catching Chief, on. When Chief Keith came out with... Uh, uh, that's the shit I don't like. Like, son, that shit was everywhere. Yeah, you know, it was. It was everywhere, dude. You know, and, and and it was. It was raw. It was different. You know, and I really thought that the door was about to open for all these rappers. And I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, you know, they, they, you know, they hit, and it just, it, it didn't. I don't know, dude. It, it didn't go any further than that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, man, it, it's really hard. I I can't call it on why you know. It was very short lived because you could say that that whole drill movement lasted all but maybe a year or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah very true. Like to be honest, you know what I mean. Like after that, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, Chief Keith has had his not not major hits, but you know he's out hit, there. He's yeah, out here. He, he, he he makes a couple songs every now and then that you I know mean, might not hit the radio, but you know I they, honestly like Chief Keith. A lot of the things that he's featured on, I usually like his features, dude. Yeah, I mean, usually, I, I, I honestly. I'm not the biggest uh, Chief Key fan, but he does. Uh, there's a lot of songs that I, I will say that I do rock with every now and then. Um, but I mean, would, would you think maybe the uh, the topic, you know, the uh, pretty much the whole yeah, I think that's the whole I, I coach, the gang culture and yeah, and, like and the Cause, cause yeah. here's the thing, you know, you know, rappers nowadays, yeah, they'll, they'll still talk about you know. You know, gangs and violence and whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, no, but, but, but they're real like, light on, on. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I feel like Chicago rappers are just straight up. They'll, they'll fucking. Yeah. What 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 is that? We call them kill scripts. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kill scripts on the fucking on the beat. And that's yeah. What they do. You know what I'm saying? So it's. I mean, Chicago's a whole fucking different world right yeah, now. That shit is fucking crazy right for, now. For, for Christ's sake. But um, I mean, I don't know, man. I I honestly, it because it, it, it's really looking it's really looking quiet for uh. For, uh, for the drill scene right Yeah, that was it. Real quiet. Um, you know, a lot of rappers who are even, for example, uh, Lil Reese, I didn't even know he was signed to a, a major. His, he, he hasn't released anything. Why? Because he has no buzz around him. So it, it doesn't make sense for a record label to, you know, invest money into somebody who That's isn't very true. Do shit. So they're probably just shoving him until his contract runs out and kicking his ass the fuck out. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, you know, record labels do that all the time. They sign up a bunch of these dudes once a certain style hits, and then when the fad wears out and it's not as popular as it was before, they're like, "All right, you know, my bad, you didn't get to release an album, but you know, right. you got you some money, but peace out." Like, right? Yeah, and and I mean, do you, do you guys think that this is something that I mean, you know, you guys have, you know, pretty much been around, I guess. For lack of better terms, <laughs> have. but do you think this is something that's just going to continue to happen in music, where like? You know, eventually- I mean, I think so, just because I mean, I feel like it's even worse now than it was before, because like just because of the fact that you that they're able to you're able to garner more artists that are being signed than it was back in the day, like being back in the day, you had to actually know somebody or go into the office and you had to audition or put in your your uh, your your demo or whatever. And yeah, yeah, now it's yeah. just like, oh, you know, this kid's got like, you know, 100,000 views on YouTube. Let me check him out. Oh, he's all right. Let me go ahead and put him on. He's on this whole thing right now and he sounds tight. And then it's just like, uh, you know, you have your little YouTube buzz or whatever. And you might have a couple singles out there. But I mean, once that shit dies down, if you don't make some popping ass songs like off some Drake Rihanna shit, mm-hmm. you're not going to get picked up. I mean, it happens with rappers. It happens with pop stars. It happens with country singers. It yeah. happens with everyone. Like, it's, it's like, one of those things that I happens in like that uh that term what have you done for me lately is pretty oh, much the sure. music oh, yeah. is the music industry to a T, man. Yeah, Especially yeah, with yeah. these three sixty deals that they be doing right now, dog. Those things they when just they, break the shit out of artists. They take everything pretty much. Yeah, they, they charge them. you for everything. Like it's 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 like a puff contract. It's like signing a bad boy contract yeah, back right. in the nineties. But like to the F degree. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking ridiculous. You know what you know what's funny? I I I, I was actually listening to uh Styles P talk about the puff uh the puffy deal and um on the Tech Stone uh, podcast, yeah, and um, he actually said that that Puffy was actually he was giving what everybody was giving, you know, like so his deals really aren't weren't as bad as everybody makes him out to see. Well, I I, I, see. I mean, it may have been for him, but for um later later bad boy artists, like I read a book <laughs> um by a later bad boy artist. I wish I could remember the dude's name, but he's on the um. I want to say the what is it, the Bad Boy for Life video where Diddy's sitting on on the roof of the of the house or some shit like that. 
Yeah, I can't remember. Either way, the dude's G in the video. He's the third rapper in the video. G uh, no, it's not G Depp. Like oh. it was a, it was a definitely a lesser known artist. He was supposed to be signed to be a rapper. He ended up basically writing rhymes for Puff for his yeah. album and for all the bad boy shit. He got on like a couple of, uh, a couple of joints that were, you know, that were pretty popping. But it's just like, you know, of course, Puff dominated the video even with other niggas rapping on scene right then and there. Mm. And he was just writing. And he was like, yeah, well, Puff would, you, like, you know, Puff would give you like all this type of stuff for the video. Like he'd give you a Rolls Royce for the video and all right. this champagne and you know X amount of this and X amount of that. And then next thing you know, you getting a check from Puff for right, right. all of that shit, and you thought it was a gift. Right. So it's just like, yeah, Puff may have been not all right with some of his artists, but some of his artists he was straight <laughs> yanking, dog. Yeah, and and you know. So that's actually I, I feel like it's crazy you mentioned that because um the whole uh, Drake situation I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with it um apparently there's this guy named Mo G <laughs> out of uh, uh Toronto <laughs> yeah um now well you know to, to to clear it up for you know you know those listening who don't know what happened Mo G local rapper from Toronto uh I th I feel like the only reason anybody really even knows who he is outside of Toronto is because Drake mentioned him in the song yeah like, Summer sixteen. Mo G with the dance moves, and Chris Breezy, with whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, you know, that kind of, and, and it's funny, it's crazy how one bar alone, you yeah. know, will make his buzz rise up probably by more than it's ever been. Exactly. So, quick, quick, uh. Quick question. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think about Drake? With, with, with the whole, uh, you know, ghost riding and, you know, pretty much what you're talking about. I, I mean, I'm assuming that everybody ghostwrites nowadays. I can't think of any. I, I don't. I don't. I don't believe any of these rappers actually write lyrics anymore. Look, I'm. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, right? I, I feel like a lot of people feel this way, and this is personally how I feel. Um, I, before all this shit came out, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I really thought Drake, to me, was up there just as an overall musician, even rapper. I think he was a good rapper. I think he makes good, you know, good songs. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like you can't even include him in the list with you know guys like even guys now like Kendrick, yeah, you know, uh, you know, J Cole, yep, you know, maybe even Big Sean, you know, like other rappers that are, you know. That I can are, see Big Sean writing his own music. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. But I will say this though: to me, Drake is still up there as one of the greatest. I feel like hit makers in in rap history. Right? He's a he's more like an entertainer. He's like. I, I would say he's more like the Janet Jackson of like the hip hop world, where he's like one of the biggest things on the planet right now, at least. But like, there's not too much to anything that he really says. He makes a lot of love songs. He's yeah. he's real, real popular. I mean, like he, he you know he'll put on a hell of a show. Right. But like you know like is he's I don't think he's ever gonna be he's gonna be one of the greatest because he was one of the most popular but he's yeah. never gonna be one of the most uh, lyrically greatest. Uh, yeah, nah, so I agree. so all right, now I'm nice how this what do y'all think about Rihanna, Beyonce, you know, all these other people who have writers. You know, people you know that there's mo there's a whole team. And see, you know, that's the thing. That's one of the things I don't understand is because you can be a singer and have ten people writing songs for you, but if you're a rapper, you got anybody writing songs for you. Oh, you're he, you're he, whack as shit. Even, like even like, Drake, I feel like Drake, like he he brings his, you know you know when it's a Drake song, like, like you know he has his little signature, he has his own little. See, so I mean, but honestly, I think he's supposed to as a rapper. Like, see, if he's a rapper, you're supposed to have that. No, no, no. And and here, here's my whole thing. Also, on, on the whole ghostwriting thing, right? Like, a lot of people fail to realize, and, and you really will, will will witness this and, and really realize this when you listen to uh, like a reference track from a lot of uh, you know the writers and shit. That it'll sound a lot different from the final product. Oh, yeah, right. So here's my whole thing, right? My whole <coughs> thing is, I feel like. Yeah, there's some credit to be taken away because you didn't write your shit. But I feel like there's still a lot of credit to be given for making that song a fucking hit. Yeah, because you know I mean, I mean like, you and, may have not have written the and, words, but you may have set it up and, and gave and, it that and, feel. And, and that and that goes to the Rihanna's of the world, mm -hmm. Beyonce's yeah, of the world. Well, that's because they all have their signature. They like you said, they all have their little signature thing exactly. that I would say that that makes them a hit and, and you, that you they can put on this, put a spin song. on a song. Exactly. You, you know, know what I'm saying? And 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 I feel like the same goes for Drake, where. You know, yeah, I mean, if you listen to the Quinn Miller songs, to be honest, if you were to hear it and it wouldn't have been Drake, you probably would have thought it was fucking hot right. garbage. Yeah, <laughs> you know what true. I'm saying? And, and Drake, he pretty much did it. Now, he changed a couple things on it. Maybe the delivery was a little bit Might different. Might have changed the line here or there. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I, I feel like they still have to more or less put it together. They still have to make it work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just because something sounds, you know, you know, I guess 
the, just because it's a reference song, just because somebody else wrote it, I feel like you really, at the end of the day, yeah. have to make it into something good. I mean, some of the greatest singers of all time have teams of writers. I mean, yeah. shit, Whitney Houston didn't write all her own music. Right. So Yeah, I mean, I, and, and, and I feel like best examples are right in front of us, Beyonce. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Like, the whole time, um, Dr. Dre... I, I recently found out that he didn't. He had writers on the on. Oh yeah, on, Ice Cube on, wrote everything for him for uh, a while until yeah. it, until they had a falling uh, out. Uh, what's that? What's that? What's his album? The Chronic. Yeah, the Chronic. Oh yeah, no, he had Ghostwriters yeah, all yeah, over that. Big, uh, and the Chronic 2001. Uh, Royce the Five Nine. I, I saw an interview with him on Vlad that the, the song with Mary J. Blige. He wrote that. Oh uh, yeah, he wrote mm-hmm. Dre's verse and everything. And, and you know, like I feel like people look at that album. People look at Dre like you know all time great. You know what I'm saying? But I mean. Um, I think people look at Dre as one of the all-time great producers, more yeah, so than true. a rapper. Because, that's I mean, true. like... But, but that album, though, that album is really, like... No, it's a classic album. Yeah, it's a, it's a vicious album. He has some good writers for okay, that fucking so, album. So, 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 let me ask you this, right? Like, I'm, I'm going to be straight up 100 with y'all, right? I probably couldn't name a song on the album. I could probably name a bunch of, uh... You know, like... I, if I, 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 could, I, I could name it if I hear a bunch of songs. Like, I'm sure I've heard a bunch yeah, of Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Too, but... I'm going to be honest with you, when that album came out, I was probably, what, like, fucking nine, ten, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wasn't really too into it. Like, I would listen to it, but I wasn't really that into it, right? Yeah. Now, you just said that album is a classic album, right? I mean, what, like, why, why isn't there this shade over Dre for not writing his shit and that being a classic album? And, and there is and, not, and, and there, there is, is over for, Drake for Drake. Yeah. Like why? I, I why really do you guys think? don't think. I mean, I think right now it's just because they're not looking at it in the terms of 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 when Dre was the most popular. Like if 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 someone had been like, oh, well, Dre didn't write this back in the day. Oh, yeah, I mean, like it would have been a huge yeah, thing. Been a problem. But like you know, it comes out now, yeah, and yeah, they're like, right they're like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, he's still a beast. He, you know, he's the yeah. king of beats and shit like that. You know, blah 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 blah. I mean, it's like Timberland. Timberland. I don't know if he wrote his own shit because if he did, it wasn't good. Yeah. If if he had somebody else write it for him, it still wasn't good. Yeah, but the I'm nigga good. is a fucking beat maker, so like yeah, that's what yeah. the fuck he's a king of. Like Timberland's always gonna be a great. He's never gonna be a, considered a, one of the best rappers in the world because I mean like he's no, he's terrible as a fucking rapper. So, we all so, know it. So but. all that being said, would you say that Drake become a producer? <laughs> <laughs> nah, what I was gonna say is now you know I'm gonna be honest. I I've never thought of Drake as the greatest lyricist ever, but I I have thought of him as just making to me personally good music you know I, I feel like he makes good sound of music now do you guys think he's gonna be, you know everybody's gonna forget the whole fact of the ghostwriting shit just how like how they forgot about dre honestly i don't think they're gonna no give a fuck I mean, I mean they didn't forget about dre because uh it was never i, I don't you see the thing is right you know with social media you know with, with uh you know shit, shit has changed dude you know so so there, there's a platform for these ghostwriters to come out and be like yo I wrote this shit. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Where back then, that shit wasn't really around. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like you couldn't go on, on YouTube and post up a video. If anything, you could go out and tell your homies, like, yo, dog, you know, I, I wrote for Dre, yo. And you honestly, I mean? back in the day, the shit wasn't traceable like it is now. It, yeah, was, exactly. it wasn't as traceable. Like, you actually had to have it confirmed yeah. from a source that was either in the studio when it happened or knew the person that wrote the shit right. to say, oh, yeah, you know, Elvis Dude. wrote Trey's rhymes. Like, you know, that's. Imagine trying to get out a, 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 a <clears throat> reference track. Without YouTube, without social media, right? How, the fuck how would you do that shit? Like, yeah. like if you try to take it to fucking TV, they look at you like yeah. you're stupid. Like, get the fuck out yeah, of they'd, be, they'd be like, "What, dog? Did you just record this yesterday? Yeah, you exactly. know, the song's been out for months, dude. Like, what are <laughs> yeah. you talking about? Exactly. So I mean, yeah, I mean that that, that is true. It's uh, it a so yeah, it's crazy, man. I, I mean, me personally, man, I, I think I think Drake, I mean, I like Drake's music, dude. You know, what I mean, I rock to it. You know, um, I personally could care less if he has Ghost Riders. I mean, if and, anything, and, if anything, I feel like he should maybe get more Ghost Riders because that shit is working for him. Yeah, and his, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? his thing, thing, right? I feel like everybody already has because nobody like he Drake has this aura of him. Like nobody really looks at him like a vicious. Like he's kind of yeah. just like a I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, feel like I get this, what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You, and, and I'm sure those who are like, listening, I yeah. hope y'all get what I'm saying. I don't really know how to put it in the words right now, but <laughs> it's it's like he kind of like. This kind of fits him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly think that it's kind of the same thing, like I said, about Dr. Dre. Like, 
Drake is so big right now, it doesn't matter. Like he's is I mean, people unless unless you're a hardcore hip hop head that is about lyricism, like no one is really so, going to clown him about having so, a ghostwriter. So, so like this is what I think, right? I think I think that at the end of everything, I do think that it's going to affect them because um I don't think he's going to go down like Drake. I mean, I'm sorry, like Dre, you know, like as like one of the greats because of this. I, I do believe it's going to affect them, right? As far as um immediately, nah. As long as he keeps making hits, it's not gonna matter. I don't think. Man, as long as he still got a lot of sixteen-year-old nah. girls out there buying his music, they ain't yeah. gonna give a fuck. Now, 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 I'm gonna tell y'all this: if it was Kendrick who I found out who said he wasn't, he was was Oh yeah, it's a different story. That would fucking yeah. break yeah. my heart, dog. I know, be, so. Because I mean, because I mean, Kendrick's making conscious music, you know, like so, you know, like, like, let's be. And real, it's not son. just conscious; it's the yeah. fact that he's a, to me personally a. a Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If but then I, again, I'd be like, yo, if Kendrick has got a ghostwriter, where the fuck is the ghostwriter? And give that nigga a deal right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Definitely. That's true. Definitely. Yeah, or shit, even you no know, J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if any see, one of these guys, if, if I, feel like, like, I feel like the, the, the reaction would be a lot worse but dude, if it was for them. Uh, true, Drake, Drake I agree with you. party music. J. Cole and Kendrick don't. That's what I mean. Like, like, like but when, that's, when that's, I don't think in, that's the reason. I don't think that's the reason why I feel like everybody views them as lyricists. And okay, Drake but when you tune in, when you tune in to, to to Kendrick, at least me, right? I can relate to some of the shit he says. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm looking, you know, and, and I'm kind of taking it as almost like if you, you know, like you're having a conversation with him, like he's telling you this. You, like, you know what I'm saying? So if I find out that 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 he has a ghostwriter, it's almost like he was lying. Like you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 like I don't, I don't, it, it, like you know, your song doesn't mean the same to and, me. Yeah, and, and, and it's funny, right? Because um, uh, I was actually talking about this shit uh with my friend. Like there was now, I don't, it, I, I find it kind of weird that this didn't really take off too much. But apparently, somebody on, on, I think it was either Twitter, or it was some kind of social media page. They pointed out that um that pretty much J Cole was lying in that song. I, I'm sure you guys have heard it. Uh. The joint that's like, and I ain't never did this. We talked yeah, about this. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, in that song, at the end of it, you, you pretty How much How do they know he's lying? Like, no, 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 listen, I'm about to tell you. So, he uh he says that he lost his virginity to another girl who was a virgin, but he thought that she wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, you, you guys have heard the song. So yeah. yeah. Pretty much, he found out that she was a virgin too, right? But, in his previous mixtapes, in one of his first mixtapes, he said that he lost his virginity to, to like, uh, uh, a hoe, so a he can. Ho. Yeah, I remember that. He lost his virginity to somebody just because he knew he could do it. Exactly. Instead of somebody, he yeah. Exactly. So it's it, now. Oh, so and it's funny because I was talking about now. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm more of a Kendrick fan than I am a J Cole fan. Mm -hmm. But I, a lot of my friends are, are you know big J Cole fans, and I brought it up to them, and a lot of them, to be honest, were kind of like, damn, it's kind of it's kind of whack that like. I mean, cause yeah. it makes me think, yeah. like, it makes me think to me, damn, what the like? Because here's the whole thing. Back to what I was just saying, like you know, these artists like Kendrick and J Cole. We relate to them more than we can. Because yeah. here's the thing. We don't have fucking Bentleys and, and, and Maybacks yeah. and, 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 hot, and, and ridiculous amount of money and, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, shit like that, you know, like, you know, and, and to be perfectly honest, you could say that, you know, Kendrick and J. Cole kind of speak for the people. Yeah. Or, I mean, you like, got a nigga, you got J. Cole rapping about fucking Zally Mae, nigga. I'm exactly. dealing with that bitch too, shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? And, and shit. Songs about losing your virginity and shit like yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? That's, it's that's more shit. relatable. It's, it's more relatable. personal. Exactly. So I feel like, I feel like for that reason, you know, alone, like, to tell what you were saying, that, that would be a bigger, you know, blow to just fans in general if they found out that J. Cole wasn't writing this shit. Yeah. Just because something like, there's something as small as this where, you know, there was kind of like a, you know, what, what's really the truth here? True. To, to me, it was like, a, what the fuck? But you bro? also gotta take, I, what I've always called creative license into account when it comes to rappers because you've got rappers talking about, you know, like, yeah, Eminem talking about he's going to cut off his mom's head and, you know, drive, you know, slit her throat yeah. and drive her around town or dr Kim's throat and drive her around town, showing her, showing her off to people. You got niggas talking about, I'm going to kick in your door yeah. and shoot everybody in the place and I'm going to put three in your face. Like, you know, like shit like that. I feel like all, all the drugs and all the extra misogyny and all that extra other shit, like, I feel like you have to be excess storyteller in order to be a rapper most of the time like there's the rappers out there that spit the truth and then there's just the rappers out there who are just like yo uh this is this is like you know i'm just gonna rap about this and act like it's really my life and you know it's not their life right that's true that's true i mean but like even like like to go back to what you said on eminem right like you know him talking about killing his uh his mom and his baby mother 
and, and all that, right? Um, you know, maybe obviously he didn't kill him because he's still alive, yeah. right? So, but like, I, I kind of felt like it was more like that's what he was feeling at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is what I feel. So, so. But it's, again, it's a story. Yeah, yeah, it's a story, but, but it's still, there's still some truth to it because he feels, he at least feels it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nice. So, and, and then, and then, and then if I was to find out that he had a ghostwriter behind that, I would be like, hold up, dog. So y'all both felt this? You yeah. Know, or, or, or was one of you just lying? Or, or were you just giving it to me to rap because he's the crazy exactly, white boy? Pretty yeah. much, exactly. Pretty much, like, I feel like to, to sum it all up, you know, a lot of us, you know, the reason we like certain music is because we relate to it. Yeah, and definitely. And, and and if you were to find out that your favorite artist who makes a song, let's, let's say the one song that really hits home for you. If you were to find out that some, you know, he had a ghostwriter, that shit would fuck you up. Yeah. You're thinking, damn, man, I thought this nigga really was kind of feeling how I was feeling, exactly. but at the same time, he wasn't, and it was all bullshit. So I feel like it would be a lot bigger of a blow, just in general, to their career. Mm-hmm. It would be a, it would be almost career ending, personally, I think, if if Kendrick and J. Cole was to come out and say that they had ghostwriters. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I, kind of going back, yeah. I'll give you the example of Rick Ross. Yeah, was yeah. it not even six years ago they found the pictures of him as a correctional officer oh, yeah, and all yeah, this other yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this nigga been rapping about trafficking yeah. cocaine for like almost ten years now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, you're right. It's kind of like, so what do you? And, and, and it's funny because I actually seen an interview with him on that where they where they questioned him about it and, and he played it off real well. I ain't gonna fake dog. Like he was like, you know, he, he's like, I'm not gonna say too much about it, but I was part of a team who sent me in there. So he kind of tried to make, you know, try to play, yeah, it, all, right, nigga. play it all into, you know, yeah, right. I'm big time in, you know, so they, they, that, that's what we do. Yeah. Now, but see, but here's the thing, dog, like, something like that, you could, I, I feel like that whole gangster world, man, you can say whatever the fuck you want, really, and, and it's up to niggas to believe you if they really want exactly. to. Exactly. Like, that's true. That's true. It's so, basically dependent upon how convincing you are to exactly. get niggas to listen to be like, oh, shit, this no, nigga's real, this nigga's live, exactly. blah, blah, Like, who, I mean, yeah, there's going to be people who are going to... Who are gonna believe in this? People are gonna be like, oh, "That's bullshit." You know what I'm saying? And, and that's really up to the fans to really determine. Yeah, hey, that, that's so true, dog. Cause I remember, you know, like I said, I said, like I said earlier, I grew up listening to the locks, right? And you know, to me, Styles P was one of the hardest motherfuckers ever, dog. He's the hardest. His Nick, his moniker is the hardest out. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so like, you know, I see him now. You know, obviously he's a little older. You know what I mean? And I have seen, you know, interviews with him on Vlad and. You know, this, this, and that. He just seems like an average dude. You yeah. know what I mean? Where, yeah. like, where, like, you know, I thought he would have been in that joint kirking, you know, just kirking out. Nah, know. Styles is a, is, he's, he's really calmed down. Yeah, he's, he's and, like, like, a, like he's a just chill. Yeah. He's a chill dude. Like, he's you know? real, real even now. Like, I mean, he's like, he's always been a beast to me, but, like. I mean, like, yeah, definitely, definitely still a man. Yeah. Lately. It's just, Styles probably my favorite rapper, to be honest. I, I can, I can agree yeah. with you there. Now, one thing I did want to want to talk about is like actually one thing that me and Chris had talked about uh <laughs> last podcast. Talk, we had talked about to talk on the podcast yeah, and we just didn't get to it. Went over our heads. Um was that those songs that you hear that you haven't heard in a long ass time How and then what? it's just like when you hear it, you're like, "Damn, I remember this song and you just get that flood of memories that come back to you. And then you're listening to fucking uh, early 2000s rap for the whole day. Exactly. Possibly possibly the whole week. Probably. Now, I'm going to tell you, like, the other day, what actually made me think about the fact that we didn't talk about it was I was riding to work and I had my, my, my MP3 player on shuffle and the intro to It's Dark and Hell is Hot came on and I was just like... (laughs) Damn, I forgot how fucking sick this song is. Yeah. And then I was just like, you know what? Like, I, I started thinking about all this. I started thinking about this joint came out when I was in high school. I remember I was in fucking Spanish class, um, like with a whole bunch of niggas talking about this song. And we were talking about how I mean, talking about how much we loved the album and what we thought was dope about it. And everybody was loving DMX at that point. Dude, real quick, touch on DMX. Quick story about it's dark as hell is hot. I don't know if you remember the album. Of course. The cover, the album cover, he's he's covered in blood. Yeah. And uh, when you open the book, he's in a bathtub. No, that's actually flesh of my flesh is the one where he's covered in blood. Oh yeah, it's dark as hell is hot is the first one. Yeah. I'm talking about flesh of my flesh, blood my blood. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I actually wasn't hit the DMX uh, when it's dark as hell is hot came out. Oh man. Yeah, I I wasn't hit. I I really didn't learn about DMX until uh the Rough Riders anthem, right? Uh, stop. Yeah. Right. Right. So. So, uh, my bad, dude. It, I, it was flesh in my flesh. Yeah. But anyways, right, I remember when that when that CD came out, right, he's sitting in a bathtub full of blood, right? You know, and I'm young, dude. I'm probably like, I'm probably like, what, like, 
I know, I was probably like, maybe like 13, 14 when the album came out. Yeah. And I remember, you know, my uh, my folks, you know, my parents, they, they, they see the, you know, they pick up the book and they start looking through it. They're like, all right, so this is what he listens to. And all it is is him covered in blood in like a bathtub <laughs> full of blood. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And they're just looking at me like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with my kid? And I'm, and it's, that's DMX was another storyteller yeah, talking about he was yeah, going to rape girls. Who was there, she's 14. Yeah. You know, kick in your door, kill you and your family, and then rape your girl, make it make rape your 14 year old daughter, make it watch. Like, you know, he's only like five, eight, five, yeah. seven. You know, and I really thought he was like this, like. Huge it's the way he raps. It's just like Ti. Yeah. Ti is a small ass motherfucker. Yeah. And if you like, if you look, if you watch his videos, like you always know the short people in videos, they're always the <laughs> videos are always angled up so that they look taller. Yeah, yeah, nah. You know it's funny. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. So I mean, like Ti is real small, hey, but the nigga talks like he's ten foot hey, tall. But, but going back to what you were saying, right? When, when you come across like an old song that oh, yeah. you haven't heard in a while, right? You know, sometimes I catch myself listening to some of the old shit that I used to listen to, right? And I realized that I really didn't understand what they were talking about. Oh, hell yeah. You know, because I wasn't old enough. Yeah. You know, and, and you come back and listen to it. If and anything, I, if anything, I could vouch for that. Because I remember being, yeah. like, fucking, like, 10 years old. And, uh, you know, I would fucking, I mean, for, for those who don't know, that was my brother. You know, I, I used to hear him listening to fucking Dipset, 3-6 Mafia, Bone Thugs. And I would be listening to it, and I would have absolutely and no right. idea, right? Yep. Like, I would have no idea what the fuck was going on. And sure enough, later when I was, you know, I guess now that I'm fucking 23, I listened to their shit, yeah. and I'm like, this is exactly what these niggas were yeah, saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, it was the same way with me. When I grew up, my brother got me into Wu-Tang at a very young age. Yep. And I was all about him. And then it was like when I got older, I realized, well, damn, these niggas were wild. Yeah, right? And I mean, yeah. it was even like that with R and B back nah, in the day. And, and, and it's funny, right? Because uh, uh, you know, I would try to put some of my friends on to like, you know, some of the people that you know I, I was listening to because of my brother. Yeah. And they would look at me like, what the fuck is this? Cause I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was. But I would listen. I guess I would listen to it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like just. You, kind of, you, you get desensitized too, because you know what I'm saying. For somebody who's not really into that, if you just put that on them, like like you know, I, I had a girlfriend, right, and um, she wasn't hip to three six, right, and uh, you know, we start messing around, whatever. I j had just met her, you know, we riding in the car, right, and this is when uh, Blue Lean and Dream had came out, mm -hmm. you know, the Juicy J album, mm -hmm. right. Put the album in, dude. Yo, she she at first she had never heard three six, which blew my mind. I'm like, you don't know who three six is, you know what yeah. I mean? She didn't, you know, I guess she just wasn't like that. Right, so I start listening to this joint. She's like, "What the fuck is this?" She's like, "You know, this shit's so vulgar." Like, yeah. she was shocked. Yeah, she was shocked that I would listen to that shit. And I'm just like, "Dude, like, you know, shit rocks." Yeah, yeah <laughs> you nah. know, and, and it goes to show you, you know, you get desensitized. Yeah, but um, but yeah, not, nah, but like, like, like we were saying, like the whole, the whole, my whole thing about you know, even bringing that up last, the last time. Yeah, because I remember, like, again, I was, I was at work and I was listening to uh. I think I think what happened was my shit was on shuffle too, and I want to say an old locks song came on, or maybe it was an old Styles P song, but it was with the whole locks, right? Yeah. And uh, that just was like, oh shit, this song. I, I just remembered how awesome that song was, yeah. and I started listening to shit, right? And then I started thinking, I was like, damn, dog, like these songs are like they're vicious and they're classics, and I know all the words to them, yeah. and I love them, right? But why is it that now, if you know the locks were to release an album? I probably it's not wouldn't. The same feeling. It wouldn't be. It's not the same feeling, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I and, and and I don't even think that I would say that you know their their you know level of lyricism has fallen or anything. Yeah, definitely not. I, mean, I, don't, I I still think Jay is nice. I still think Sheik is nice. I still think Styles is is super nice. You know what I'm saying? But for whatever reason, I feel like now it wouldn't be the same feeling for me to listen to like let's. I, I don't think there will be a song on 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 a new album. Let's say. Supposedly, we are the streets too. Then, then you know, uh, um, fucking uh, money, power, respect. Yeah. There, 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 there's not gonna be a song that gives I mean, you that feeling. Per perfect True. example of that is both thugs and harmony. I yeah. mean, shit. I, I personally would argue that anything after, and and I'm a huge Bone fan. I love Bone, right? But to me personally, anything after Resurrection, dude, I'm not rocking with you, dog. Like, it, it's just not. I don't know what it is, you know what I'm saying? And why, why, why do you think that is? Like, even, and, and it's funny because, you know, even, uh, now, you said, I remember we were talking a couple podcasts ago about Wu-Tang. Like, I personally yeah. didn't even know that they were releasing music or that they had released music in the past, what, 
20 years almost. To yeah. Be honest, I personally not as a group. They have. I mean, individually, they've been releasing. No, they have. They have released. Uh, they oh. released the album last, I want to say last year, maybe. Dude, see? the last Wu Tang album that I. That and then I before that, I think it was like 2007. W. Like, yeah. yeah the see, w 2005, 2007, see, something like that. Even then, right? Like, I, this is a legendary music group, Wu Tang. Like, that's. You know, it's also eight niggas in a group, dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but my whole point is, I feel like they don't. Like it, it's not that feeling anymore, but they still have, but everybody still loves them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why do you think that is? I think it's, I think it's just the time frame of, of music. I mean, it's just like I grew up on the joint like so back in the day, and it was so new and it was so raw for the, for what it was back in it the was day. New. And yeah. like it's just like you, Wu Tang is Wu Tang, and Wu Tang will always sound like Wu Tang. They usually don't sound like some new type of shit, but like. You, I mean, it's just, I, I guess it's just you're, you're, you're used to that sound. You, oh, you're oh, kind of, they just need to start sounding like down south rappers. You know what I'm saying? Panda, never that. Panda, right? Never. Yeah, that, that, might, that might be it, dog. They might just have to reach, you know, you know, stop. If y'all can see Chris's face, though. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> might be it, dog. Hey, you, you said it, right? You got to go away from your roots. Right, so hey, maybe nah, see they 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 uh they made their money, they fed their family. Yeah, now nah, they're. I think, I think they can stick with their roots, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> that yeah, that, oh man, if I ever hear Styles on the fucking <laughs> on, on, on the future cadence, I got miles on the letter. Yeah. I've heard Jada kiss on some shit like that, and I can't stand. Yeah, now nah, he tried. It. Like he I tried was it. just like Jada, what the fuck are you doing, dog? He this tried ain't it true. for a song or two. You know, and he he also did the uh, the little hotline blink. Yeah, thing. but you know, I'm sorry. This that's 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 a that's a that's kind of a pet peeve of mine is that old school rappers that were used to sounding a certain way and ha- having a certain level of skill and and shit dumbing with their music, basically, yeah, dumbing it down for to try and to try and appease to the new generation. Right. I'm just like, dude, if you were a beast doing it your style, like. Give a little new flavor to it, but don't give up on your style. It's like it's like Primo's new music right now. Primo's new beats, like when you listen to Prime, like with him and Royce the Five Nine, mm. is newer style Primo beats. It doesn't sound like all his old like you know kind of yeah. soul beats, but it still has that key that Primo signature, signature yeah. to it that you know. Oh, this this is DJ Premier. This this has to be DJ Premier. Right. So I mean, it's just like I feel. I feel like rappers should be able to do that. Also, you still be able to keep your individual style and flow, but bring it to like the new beats and not, whatever, not, not, and be able to. Let me work ask y'all, y'all opinion, right? You know, everybody says, you know, and I, I hate to bring up Kanye again in, in, in the podcast. <laughs> like we yeah, talk we about talk about this. Right. Nigga. I mean, this nigga says a lot of shit that we talked about. We almost made it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. almost. Yeah. 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 Almost. I mean, like literally, we're two minutes over how far we usually go, and like we almost made it, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Like, so y'all can blame me for that. One. But you know, everybody talks about you know they miss you know the old Kanye who's you know you know sampled all these soul beats, and yeah, soulful beats, and and not all this crazy 808s, heartbreak, fucking uh, you know Yeezys, crazy sounding beats. Now I now do y'all think he he still has some kind of old Kanye in it? As as far as the producer goes. Personally, I I think he does to some degree. Yeah, I, I think he could. I think he just has to like really. He has to find something that he really wants to work on. And I, I mean, I think he's to the point now where he's he just would rather come up with some new shit, like some new random shit. And you know, of course, in Kanye fashion, thinking it's the hot new thing. But honestly, I think. Ah, shit, Kanye has fucking sampled so much shit. Maybe yeah. he just ran out of shit to sample. No, and, 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 you, you know, you know, it's funny. It's funny you say that shit though because. If you really look at the shit that he sampled in the past five years, you'll be like, how the fuck did this nigga find this shit? I'm saying. Random like, as shit. Random I mean, as fuck. Okay, though, because, see, you, you, uh, your question was, is he still the old Kanye? Right? Right? That, that was the, no, well, my thing is, yeah. do you, personally, do you feel like when you listen to a Kanye song, aside yeah. from obviously his voice, yeah. does he still have that signature you, Kanye yeah, sound? Yeah. I, I mean, dude. The shit about it is that the signature Kanye sound is some wild shit. You know what I mean? It's some wild shit. Like, everything is different. I feel like that's kind of his signature, dude. I don't think what so. What you mean? He come out with 808 and they came out with the 808, Watch the Throne, Yeezus. Three completely different mm, albums, dude. No. I wouldn't say Yeezus what? is that much different than, than 808. No. Wow. I, yeah, no, I have wow. to say it's, it's, it's a lot completely different. different. It's How? completely it, it, different. That's, that's no album. It's a goddamn techno beats. T- Jesus is just a jumble of of a lot of different shit. Yeah, like I mean, the 
I, I'm not going to lie. The, the thing I don't like the most about 808s is, is the, is the auto tune and, and uh, a lot of the lyrics. Like the beats are okay for me. I actually really like 808. I mean, a lot of people really like yeah. 808. I I equate that because I I have a, I have this thing about me. I don't know what the fuck is wrong, but apparently I always hate everything that everybody loves. <laughs> so like like my biggest thing that everybody used to tri- trip out on me is that the movie Training Day with Denzel. Oh, yeah. I hate that movie, and yeah. everybody loves it. And it's just like, how you hate that movie? This movie is. I was like, nigga, I've seen it ten times. Like I just don't like it. Like it's just it's just something. It's just it's, it's 808 is just like it's got a couple of things that I just don't like about it, but there are some positives to the album for me. For you, this, I, I really can't say that there were too many positives on that yeah, I like album for G, me. I, like you, so I love the song with Chief Keef. That's my shit. I really love that joke. But I mean, I, I, um, I, I think, I think Kanye still has his signature sound. I, I, I think his signature sound is just, his signature is kind of just doing some wild opposite shit, I think. Nah, his signature, right. he even says it in the song. I miss the old Kanye. Mm-hmm. Chop up the soul, soul Kanye. Kanye. He's, he's a soulful, like, yeah. on that yeah. but, but That's his doing, sound. But, I mean, he's from doing, the city of music, dog. Doing, but he was doing soulful shit when niggas was talking about shooting people in the face and selling bricks. He was you also talking about okay, Jesus Walk nigga, right about before he made Gold so, Digger. I'm talking about the beats. That's what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, yeah, but, but even even at that time. Soulful, you, you, could, you could talk about that time, killing a nigga on a soulful beat. At, at that Cam, time. I've done it all the time. Jay-Z True. done it. Yeah, time. okay, yeah. Cam and Jay-Z done it, but who was producing for Cam at that time? You know what I'm saying? Who was producing for Jay-Z at that time? Who was in Rockefeller? It was Kanye. So, so you know what I'm saying? It was Well, Ka- well Jay-Z's rapped over some soulful shit before Kanye was yeah. even a member, so... Like, if, if yeah. you go back to Volume 1 and and Reasonable Doubt, there's some pretty soulful-ass beats on the, on those records. So, like, and, 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 and I think he still has it because... Now... I don't know who's the one who picked the sample, or who, or even if Kanye had anything to do with uh, uh, "Father Stretch My Hands" Part One. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. I feel like that sample right there is, to me, t- uh, typical yeah, yeah, old school Kanye. Just the, the the in the background. Oh, I, see, I see what you're saying. Like, that's that's yeah, to me. To me, yeah. that that is your typical Kanye. Yeah, 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 and yeah. even the drums in that, even in the verse. When you know when when the uh, the sample kind of goes away and it's just the drums, yeah, that that kind of sounds like something that Kanye would do, and that's what I mean by the Kanye sound. It's not necessarily that he he's doing something different. It's just the way he samples yeah, yeah, and the way he saying. organizes yeah. all the instruments together. I feel like that's something that Kanye has, and you can just tell if you really listen to music like that. Now I can't really tell if this is gonna uh, really like contradict what I said, but like I feel like he can reach those those heights that he was at before but at the same time like i told you before like this album is the old kanye meets the new kanye yeah. i think forever we're always going to have the new kanye but he's always going to probably give us one or two touches of yeah. old kanye lyrically and beat wise yeah. so we'll always get that oh you know that nostalgia feel for at least one or two records on his new shit yeah because of either the way he's yeah. rhyming or the way he produced it yeah. But I don't think that he's ever gonna just fully go back to old soul clap Kanye. I don't yeah, think. Yeah. I think those days are dead. Yeah, they might be. So. They might be. But yeah. I guess yeah. We'll, we'll we'll go ahead and end on that note. Um, again, guys, we appreciate you guys listening. We like all your yeah. feedback, so please leave comments, rate us. Uh, you guys know we're on SoundCloud, we're on Stitcher, we're on iTunes. Uh, also, don't forget to check out the other One Hit Combo podcast. We got the wrestling, and we also got the video games and the comic books uh, with, you know, uh, Josh it's and Don right, and man. System and we're, Katsuga. We're your one-stop for everything, man. Yeah, we yeah, got, got everything for you guys. Uh, again, thank you for listening, and this is the One Hit Combo podcast music edition. We out this bitch. Peace. 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 Pe